I've had several people who have asked me to explain more about the shut door policy of the Seventh Day Adventist pioneers uh, that lasted between <clears throat> October the 22nd of 1844 up until 1851 and why that seven year period there when they thought that Jesus Christ was coming back in on October the 22nd of 1844. On October the 22nd of 1844, the pioneers of the Seventh-day Adventist held a shut-door policy, meaning that no one else uh, was going to be saved. They, that no one else was going to be saved after October 22nd of 1844. And they rationalized this, or tried to rationalize this, through the parable of the Ten Virgins in Matthew 25, where when Christ came back, five virgins were ready for him and five weren't and the door was shut. So Miller and others had concluded that as of October the 22nd of 1844, that the door of salvation was shut and that no one else was going to be saved. This is a view that the pioneers of the Seventh-day Adventist taught, including Ellen White, Joseph Bates, and James White. All of them taught this that no one was going to be saved after October the 22nd of 1844. Well, you can imagine that as time began to pass by, they were wondering what was taking so long. Why didn't Jesus come back? So it shows that they were still anticipating the return of Christ even after it failed on October the 22nd of 1844. So in order to basically invent something is what they did uh, or to show some reason as to why Jesus had not returned when uh, October 22nd of 1844 passed Joseph Bates came up with a theory that was endorsed by Alan White and James White as, as well and this theory that he uh, espoused is found in the typical and anti-typical sanctuary uh, article that was written in 1850 and it basically is this what he is saying is this and I quote the seven spots of blood on the golden altar and before the mercy seat I fully believe represent the duration of the, of the judicial proceedings on the living saints in the most holy all of which time they will be in their afflictions for seven years that was Bates uh, reason why Jesus was now delaying when he didn't come back in October the 22nd of 1844. And this, this extension of seven years, so to speak, was also adopted by and believed by Ellen Miller and James White. So again, the door to salvation was closed and would remain closed for seven years past 1844, which would make it 1851. Again, during this time, they believed, the early pioneers of the Seventh day Adventists believed and taught, and their prophetess believed this. Ellen White believed this and espoused it on it herself and supported it. That Jesus was delaying his return for seven years because of this theory that Joseph Bates came up with on the sprinkling of the blood. You remember the high priest would go into the Holy of Holies and sprinkle on the mercy seat the blood of Christ seven times. Well, it only took him a little while to do this, but yet now they're saying it took him, it's taken him seven years to do this because that actually represented, I guess, every time he sprinkled some blood, it was a year, so he sprinkled it seven times, so they have a seven-year delay in the return. So even as early as 1846, they were still into the date setting. Ellen White, James White, and all the other early pioneers of the Seventh-day Adventists were still in the date city, something that the Bible totally prohibits against. Now then, uh, as we zoom forward to around the year 1850, uh, this is still something they were holding on to. Remember now, this is 1850. 1851, when the seven-year probation period was supposed to end, in June of 1850, Ellen White wrote in the early writings on page 66 and 67, the time is almost finished. Get ready, get ready. Now the time is almost finished. 
why is she saying in, Ju in June of uh, 1850 that time is almost finished? Because she endorsed the extension of the seven year period. And now 1851 is getting close, only a few months away. So now she is saying time is almost finished. She again is looking forward to the return of Christ in 1851. And to further show that she uh, taught this, in the early writings <coughs> in, uh, on page 58, <coughs> Ellen White said this, I saw that the time of Jesus to be in the Holy of Holies was, was nearly finished, and that time can last but a little longer. This is, end quote, that was in September of 1850. Why is she again saying it's almost finished? Why is she again saying that it can only be a little longer? Because she had bought into the theory of Joseph Bates that Jesus Christ was going to come back in 1851. Again, date sitting. So they still held on to the closed door policy, the shut door policy, that no one was being saved. So here we are up to 1850, and they're saying for six years no one was saved that the door to heaven had been shut and no one was going to be saved. Of course, 1851 came and went, and Jesus didn't return either. And guess what? The shut door doctrine all of a sudden disappears from the writings of the Seventh-day Adventist pioneers. It disappears from the writings up until this date. Nearly all Adventists I've talked to have never heard nor did they know about this prophecy that Ellen White, James White promoted in that day, still predicting the return of Christ in 1851. They had never heard or known about the shut door policy that their false prophet said was happening. All through that time, because of Joseph Bates' theory on why Christ had delayed for seven years up to 1851, she was holding on to the false prophecy of the return of Christ. And she still held on to the shut door policy that no one was being saved. And all of a sudden, in 1851, you read no more about the shut door policy. Seventh day Adventists act as though it never occurred. It did occur. And the false prophecies of the Seventh day Adventists promoted every bit of it. I hope that explains the shut door policy more and shows exactly that Ellen White did predict the return of Christ on several occasions and it all failed as anyone who tries to predict the Christ of the return of Christ will do it will fail until next time God